welcome to Ian Steve's Bargain Beer Reviews. And uh, yeah, today I've uh, my uh, lovely wife has given me an afternoon off. So I've decided to take a little bit of a walk. I've decided to, uh, ben, it's one of the things I've been trying to do for a long time actually. Uh, I live in, um, I live in a place, I live in Rail, which is about five or six miles outside of Wakefield. And there's a, uh, and I've been waiting for a nice day to walk into Wakefield from where I live. I'm trying to link loads of paths together. And I managed to um, follow old Barnsley Canal, and that pretty much takes you most of the way into Wakefield. And it's quite an, it's an interesting walk actually. So we'll just come to the end of it. Dog's knackered. Dog's next to me, panting away. Hey, bum. Hey. Eh? Got some food there. I don't think she wants it yet though, because she's a bit uh, she's a bit hot still. So I thought I might I might as well do a quick beer review. I brought a beer with me, and I thought I might as well review it. So what have I got today? I'm looking around to see if anyone can see me. Because <laughs> I'm a bit of a weirdo, I'm on canal towpath at the moment. So, uh, yeah. It's a quite a quiet area. Yeah. Have a little look around though. Quite nice. And there. Yeah. Nice little secluded area. Just just about a stone's throw from Wakefield now. Really, I'm nearly wet. I'm nearly just wet. Just before Epworth Gallery and uh, Chapel Hunt Bridge. Something that Rotherham and Wakefield have in common. They both have a chapel on the bridge. There you go, it's a little bit of a useless fact there. So, here we go. This today, it's at King Goblin. This comes at 6.6%. Now, I drunk this about five years ago now, before Eric was born. I remember cutting edges in my old house and uh, it was quite an, it was getting dark, it was an autumnal night, and I remember picking one up. And I remember really enjoying it five years ago. And I think that was before, might have been before pre Marsden years, when Witchwood was still an independent brewery. Uh, and I remember it being a really nice beer. I remember almost having like weird bubblegum flavours to it. It's always been a rich fruity beer. Let's see what it's like now. I mean, a lot of people are, I, I think, have took a, a negative slant on this beer since. It calls itself King Goblin Imperial 6.6 .6 Ruby Beer. So, we shall see. 6.6%, 500 ml I'm not going to read anything about the flavour. Bottle cap's your standard bottle cap. Look. This came in at £1.50. It's up one part of the... Four beers for six quid range at Tesco. There we go. It's been in my bag, so it's probably going to absolutely explode everywhere, and it is doing. And I've brought myself a little jar. Waste not, want not in our house. We actually save jars to drink out of because that's what tight people do. Resource, resource, resourceful people do that. Sorry. There we go. It's quite a nice uh, to dark toffee coloured beer. Just sit there in the jar. Yeah, on the, on the smell, it's um, you get that metallicness that you get from Marsden beers. Mm, I don't. It, it smells thin. You know, it only just s smells thin and weak. It don't smell like it's imperial at all. <laughs> You're not getting loads of rich flavours. Rich aromas from this, which is a shame. This is the kind of beer you'd expect to be conditioned, you know. And it is fruity on the nose. It's it's alcohol. It's got like a weird alcohol essence on the nose. Don't smell how I remember this. Um, it smells boozy. Yeah, you're getting like like boozy fruitcake notes. But I'm, I'm struggling to get past the alcohol smell. Yeah. It's almost like someone's like put nail varnish or lighter fluid in it. But behind that you're getting you are getting toffee. Like really, like a imagine a really boozy, like an unbearably boozy uh fruitcake, you know. Imagine smelling that, it's a bit like that. Anyway, here we go. It's better on the plate, it's better on the uh, mouth. It's got some warmth to it. It's definitely a, a winter beer. It's not really for this time of year when it's absolutely caning hot. Drinking a bloody Imperial Ruby beer. Completely choked wrong beer today, didn't I? Weren't that hot when I set off. About like a bit of a mini heat wave, really.
Mm. It's on the flavour. That boost follows through. Um, it's really warm on your on your chest. Sickly. Sickly. It's not masked very well the alcohol at all. Um, cheap, tastes cheap, it's thin. You are getting little you are getting fruitcake notes. And you're getting like a, a, a you what it is sweet, it's got like a sweet caramelised sugar sort of taste to it, but almost like got a brown sugar taste. Um I don't think I'll be buying it again though. No, I'm not, I'm not keen on that. There we go, look. And about when, when I poured it, I had probably about a finger's worth of uh, tan coloured head. Yeah. They're up and down these which would beers. I had a dry neck one of the dinner with Lovely. I think their dry neck is fantastic. It's a really nice beer. Brewed with the Galaxy Hop. I can tell you, I think that Galaxy Hop is a very good very good supermarket. Like a supermarket hop. It, it, I don't think it's um I don't, it seems to translate really well into supermarket beers, like the old the golden hen. That's got galaxy hop in it. And that uh, and it and it's got that peachiness that kind of comes through quite well. And dry neck's the same comes through gives it that really nice hoppiness gives it it makes it taste more than just a a premium supermarket beer quality you know it makes it taste better than that. my dad said that actually when we were drinking it together the other day almost it almost tastes like you're drinking a bit of a craft beer or something anyway back to this it tastes like a craft beer it, it well it tastes like a cheap I mean I don't think it's far off like drinking super strength or something like that, to be honest with you. It's got more quality, it's got more fruit cake, you know what's going on in it. Um there's not much on it. And it's like that sharp, that really sharp alcoholic bitterness that's a little bit tinny, a little bit metallic. Tastes cheap. Sorry, but it tastes cheap. It's a real shame. It needs more body. It needs more malts in it. Oats even, you know. And that alcohol needs supervising better, shall we say? It needs to be bring, needs to be brought down a little bit. Uh, one pound fifty. Oh, would I buy it again? Yeah, there's better beers. Well, I found a lot better beers. One pound fifty. Got good old good old Aldi at the moment. Or Lidl, Lidl, got a Lidl. Their um, beer festival stuff is just brilliant. So yeah, a bit of an unusual one today. I'm obviously outside. Let me show you dog. That's our dog. Oh, oh. That's our dog, sorry. <laughs> Not myself. Hi Bambi, say hello. And dog. Got a boxer. Those of you that have watched my videos before, I'll know that I've talked about letting her off lead, but can't do that anymore now, because she's uh, not very good with the dogs. So uh, we've got to have her on lead all the time. Which is a shame. Apart from when, like, I'm in a field and there's no nobody about. But um, yeah, it's a real shame. I, I don't know why she's turned towards other dogs all of a sudden. She's about six years old and she's absolutely fantastic with people. That being said, we did look after some dogs that attacked her uh, a year ago. Some uh, staffies uh, that were quite hostile towards her. So yeah, she's always had. She's always like snarled with the dogs and like, Brr, and then that. But that's it. Now she really attacks other dogs and it's, it's awful to see. So we just have to front lead all the time. You know, so I take back what I say now about uh, just having dogs uh, running off lead all the time. But it's the first time I've ever encountered that. I've, I've never had a dog that's been vicious towards other dogs. So it's a shame. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. I remember mean, when I was a kid, everybody had the dogs off leads. Nobody had the dog on leads. You know, they used to run around and never used to be. Never seemed to be an issue. But now, like dogs are here. You know, like it makes you wonder if there's something in food that they're eating that's making them more aggressive or you know like it, obviously this is a conspiracy theory so tin helmet on and all that sort of stuff but you know people are a lot of this mental health for men 
a lot of people seem to think that comes from uh, bread, eating too much bread and some of the food that we're eating. I mean, that's one theory anyway, definitely some of the food that we eat and, you know, manufactured food that uh, is obviously so easy to eat. You don't have to think about cooking there and don't have to think about preparing anything because you can just throw it all in a pan or in an oven. But what's really in it? You know, what's in it? What's in it? What's in your apples? You know, what's been all these pesticides and stuff that's sprayed on them? What's in them? You know what I mean? Um, and I do, I do think that like there's something to be said about it. I mean, look at all people, allergies. My allergies are terrible now. They're worse than they've ever been. I'm, I guess sneeze when I see a balloon now. You know what I mean? And it's it's just ridiculous. I don't like that. I mean, I had allergies when I was a kid, but now I just feel like I go to somebody else's house and it's a bit dusty and I'm off. And my eyes are running and everything. Maybe this, maybe it's this that's doing it. Maybe this alcohol. Maybe I've got to cut down on that. I don't know. I don't drink a lot, to be fair, anyway. But yeah, that's something to discuss in the, in the comments below. Conspiracy theories. I like a good conspiracy theory. But anyway, back to the beer. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that again. I wouldn't advise getting it either. I'll just give it a whirl. I'll get a rating now because it's not going to change. If anything, it might go down a bit. Um, it's drinkable. It's just drinkable. It's five point one out of ten. Five point one. It's just drinkable for me. Um, slightly more boozy or slightly more metallic. It, it's starting to get undrinkable or barely drinkable. So I will give it. I will give it that because it has got some quality to it. You know, it has got quite a nice. Actually, it's not nice. Actually, it's not that nice. But it's. It, it has got a bit of a fruit cake you know, to it, which is decent enough, I suppose, to give put it into fives. But it, it's not a good beer. This for one pound fifty, I paid one pound fifteen, and you know what? If you want to get drunk for six point six six point six percent, that one, you know what I mean? Six point six percent. Yeah, if you want to get drunk, grab one of these, but it's not good. The King of Legends, deep ruby in colour, aromas of treacle, toffee and dried fruits. Get the dried fruits, don't really get toffee, to be honest with you. All I got were the alcohol coming off it. Brewed with a blend of finest crystal and chocolate malts. I'm not getting the chocolate coming through at all, I must admit. There's no chocolate malts for me on that. And uh, the addition of sovereign hops. Packed full of sweet caramel uh, and coffee. I'm not getting coffee either. Earthy slight roastedness. I'm, I'm, and it says malt flavours with a warming seal of approval. It's warming for sure. I'm not getting much of anything. Yeah, okay, I'm getting a little bit of an earthiness actually. I'll give it that. Um, there's much better. There's much better out there. Um, and, and that's the thing, the quality of beer is so good now. And the thing, you don't know, you can't trust anything these days because there's so many breweries that have been taken over by all these big boys, and you can't you can't trust um, you can't trust what's been put in there or how all these recipes have been changed from the original ones. I remember this taste tasting a lot better, I must admit. But as it's for as its current form, I am honest, and I've got to give my honest opinion because what's the point in doing this otherwise? It's a five point one out of ten. I went to a party and someone put one of them in front of me. I'd drink it. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd have a, I'd drink it, but um, I wouldn't go out and buy it again. What's the point? What's the point? Anyway. Sorry, there was someone walking past. So yeah, um, yeah. Quite enjoying doing this review today, I didn't think I would. That side, I thought it'd be a bit like uncomfortable, but um, I don't mind doing it. I'm sure there's been people walking past watching me do this. That's why I keep turning like that. Because I'm, I'm kind of out on a limb, but I'm sure people can uh, see me. But anyway, yeah. So King Goblin, what's happening to Witchwood? Maybe that. Maybe add that to the comments below. I mean, like I said, some really good Witchwood beers. Like that dry next, lovely. And I, I had the gold one the other day, the Witchwood gold, and it was nice. I enjoyed it. Um, and a lot of reviewers have absolutely slammed that beer. Albeit a few years ago when they reviewed it, but. Um, If anything, it's got alcohol to it, and uh, I'm starting to feel the alcohol now. It's starting to make me feel a bit weird. Oh, anything goes, sort of feeling. Best part of a, a real ale set when you go out drinking with your mates or whatever. 
the best bit is always the first couple of pints because that's when you start just relaxing and you get that lovely sort of warm feeling and you're just like oh yes brilliant but you can't maintain that it's impossible to maintain it and I think that's what alcoholics try to do in it to maintain that lovely warm feeling you get on your alcohol uh, that when you're having your first couple of drinks and then um, yeah I, it, it's impossible don't be an alcoholic basically because um, it's there for a few drinks and then you can go out and, and for me when I go out drinking it's because I like to socialize I like to go to different places I'm like the, I'm, I'm like the ADHD of drinking I went when I went drinking with Stuart Pickard in uh, Pickard or Picard I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it I think it's Stuart Picard or Pickard mm. uh, real ginger real ale trail dude anyway we went round uh, Wakefield it was really good because like he's similar to me he likes to go to different places he's not bothered about getting he likes just to, he likes to taste to be like talking to people like different environments looking at different beers and that's what I like I just like going to different places getting it I don't drink pints anymore I drink halves so I can just go somewhere different and keep moving on you know and I enjoy that a lot more yeah, I can't take my beer I can't take alcohol anymore anyway if you start feeling really drunk it's like it spoils it it, it really does keep your session beers or if you're gonna have strong beers just have you know arbs or thirds even in some pubs and just enjoy it and just go out and enjoy it and talk to people and yeah it does let you loosen up a little bit of the alcohol and lets you sort of unload if you like to your friends or some close friends and set your mind off things and you know talk about things you wouldn't necessarily talk about normally um, and that, that's what that's a great thing about beer um, it does it does that but some people don't know when to stop and that's what the problem is they think oh great I feel like this I've got to have more I've got to have more I've got to have more and you've got to keep going and going and going and, and that's when people end up really drunk and doing stupid things and silly things so um, yeah caffeine is a drug you know caffeine is a drug that I've got to stop taking I, I, I've arguably got ADHD um, I don't know if I have or not, but I, I show a lot of signs of it. And caffeine's not good for people with ADHD. Uh, and what after a couple of cups of tea, I feel rammy. I feel rubbish. It starts to make me feel really rubbish. So I'm going to start drinking decaf tea, I think. But I, li I like the warm feeling of drinking tea. And I like the flavour of tea. And I've got some decaf tea bags, and I think they taste pretty good, actually. Uh, I get the Aldi ones, and they're alright. So I'm going to start on that, I think. But um, yeah, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. <sighs> Nearly down it now. As promised, I'm going to drink the whole thing. To be honest, the more I get down this, the more ugh, it tastes. I've given it a 5.1 out of 10. Earlier, I could have given it a little bit higher. I could have given it a 5.5, .5, but I'm glad I gave it a 5.1 because. It's got, it's got a nastiness on the end of this. It's got it's, it's nasty. It's like like drinking something like super strength. You think uh, if you, you've got a you've got a people that drink real ales and and craft beers all the time. You'll know now when if you drink a, a high ABV beer that's six percent plus, you can drink it and it doesn't taste like you're drinking a lot of alcohol. You have a, a shot of whiskey. And you taste it straight away, and you go Ugh, like that, you know, especially if you're naked. That's what this is like. Someone shouting, is, am I okay? is someone okay? Not me, I don't think. But. Uh, and, and you're getting that sort of nastiness that you get from neat alcohol, shall we say, or high ABV. If I were to, if I were to just swig some whiskey now, because when I drink whiskey, I do like whiskey. But I like to uh, put ice cubes in it, you know, and, and dilute it a little bit and, and sip it while I'm watching some films or something. With this, I kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to dilute this, am I, with some ice cubes? Not that I need to, but um, God, I'm talking rubbish now, aren't I? I can tell the, the 6.6 .6 is getting to my head. But, um, yeah, it's. It's got that nasty. It's got that nasty alcohol. That nasty alcohol vibe to it. That's not been masked very well. 
um, through the brewing process. And it is what it is. It's a one pound fifty beer. Some people love this beer, and I'm, I'm sure. And I don't think it's disgusting either. I just don't think it's very good. Five point one out of ten. Here we go. This video has gone on for twenty minutes. Oh my god! Thanks for watching, people. See you on the next review. I've been Swigging Steve. Take care.